on the brutal slayings of four college kids. The Idaho college murders. I keep imagining that they're still in there. This is not a CSI show. This is real life. We already know about the Idaho college students that was murdered. Let's go to the night that they was murdered. I want y'all to look at this. First, start off, after they was at this bar, they went to this food truck. Now, you can see Kelly hugging someone, and they just enjoying his time at this food truck. But this guy in a hoodie, he's blurred out for a reason, because investigators think he has something to do with their murder. The two girls ended up arguing with this guy. What do you hear in that instant? Um, she says, F you. After that, these girls really had fun with their phones. They had a good time. You can see she's recorded and they just walked off. A few seconds go by and the hooded man followed them as they walked off. So once again, the guy who's blurred out with the hoodie on, he is clear. At the time of me recording, I didn't know that. But now, of course, I do. Guys, I met Charlie D'Amelio, check! <laughs> Idaho College Murders. How does one individual kill four people at night and not wake up the other two roommates. It is believed that between 3 and 4 a.m. on November 13th, four beautiful souls tragically lost their lives. There are so many unanswered questions, but it's important to remember the victims and who they were. This killer needs to be found and be held accountable for this atrocity. Stop all this. Let us mourn our children and we can't when we know this person is out there. You know who did it. You, you know who you are. Just end it. The guilt has got to be just overwhelming. It's There's got to no be hiding. sickening. Stop hiding. Stop running. Just turn yourself in. This is personal. This was calculated. Because they were real human beings, Kaylee and Maddie, and they posted real college girl things, and they left it. The police release some body cam footage, and on the footage, they see three guys in the field. Okay, is there a reason why you didn't stop back there? Yeah. Well, we saw him talking to him, right, so we didn't know. know. I yelled at you guys, you didn't stop. Oh, I did not hear you. Right, yeah. well, let's walk back over here, okay? Right down the street from where the four college students were murdered. They questioned them, they asked them some questions, and these guys, they was clear. Now, it's around the time of 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. Apparently, they was all laying down or and sleep around this time. And some creep was in the house, had a knife. That knife is important because investigators just came out and said it's a fixed knife. So they know what kind of murder weapon that this person used on the four people. Two of them died in their sleep and they could not wake up at all. And I believe the other two tried to defend themselves, but they couldn't. Now the internet is now going crazy about this because it's a whole lot of dark mystery behind this because we don't know the why. We don't know the cause of all of this. So it's unsettling, it's not sitting right with a lot of people because they didn't realize that you can literally go from being this and loving your day and everything is going good until this happened. It's stated that the two surviving roommates who slept through the attack came home at 1 a.m. And then Ethan and Zayna come home at 1.45 a.m. And then finally, Kaylee and Maddie were the last to come home at 1.56 a.m. This is where it gets weird. Ethan and Zayna come home at 1.45 a.m. They were seen at that frat party at 9, 9.45 p.m. But there's this giant gap where nobody can place them in the four hours between the frat house and when they got home. And look at how close the frat house is. Watch. You see, this is about a 145 meter walk. And then when I go to this corner here, you can literally see the frat house here. You can turn the corner and you're going to see the house in the upper right hand corner. Where were they? Now, this is where we come into play because it took over the internet. TikTok hashtag Idaho murders has over 100 million views. On Reddit, it has 27,000 members that joined up to solve and figure out these theories of this case. Private Facebook groups then came together, over 30,000 people to try to talk about this. Well, not try, to talk about this case and get this figured out. Broke the internet. They noticed this one man who was being interviewed about this murder and they seen him do something weird. He smiled as he was talking about it and People didn't feel right about that, so they thought it was him. You did it. But of course, that's not true. He was clear. Well, I mean, clear. Like, this guy wasn't even, he had nothing to do with it. People online have just been ruthless. They went through and gone through all of my social media history over the past decade, partly because of all the reports that the people had sent in about me in the interview I did. Y'all, with this man, it didn't got so bad. He had to go to the police station, gave them the DNA test to prove that this is not 
my situation to be dealing with. Now he carries a gun with him wherever he go out in public because now he's scared for his life. It's becoming, you see, the dangerous game is becoming because people care. This was around Corona time, the Gabby Petito case. Actually, the media did really, really well about giving theories and clues about her case because it gave police to search right areas and it was the right areas and they found a lot of clues. So it's a bad and a good situation. With that being said, comment y'all theory on what y'all think that happened that night. I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this one. So we know the two rooms Mate slept through the attack. This is a little bit weird to me because a lot of people think that Ethan and Xana were attacked because they woke up to Kaylee and Maddie being attacked. So if they were able to wake up and hear the floor above them, why didn't these two roommates hear the floor above them? They live in the house, so their DNA is already all over the house. Okay, if everybody went to sleep, the person had to sneak in the house. Let's just say all of the doors was locked the following night, 3 a.m., 4 a.m., when the murder happened. If the front door, back door was locked, how would they get in? Second floor, it's a balcony. Is that spot on the balcony easy to access? I mean, there's a slider. You can't easily jump up there. So what this has us wondering, Ashley, and I want you to kind of walk me through this with me. Kaylee's injuries were the most severe up on the third floor, and there's no way out of the third floor would that mean the killer specifically targeted the third floor? Because it doesn't make any sense. Why would the killer go up to a floor where there would not be an easy exit for him? So the house, bedroom E is Maddie's bedroom. Bedroom F is Kaylee's bedroom. But Kaylee was not in her room with the slider door. She was in Maddie's room. They died together. Kaylee wounds was apparently more brutal for some reason. Dripping down the cabinet from the ceiling. This is in the kitchen. The kitchen was not a murder scene, but you can see that there's here and there's also a shoe here that is covered totally in then a lady came out to say this she had information because she came out with this listen carefully because this when i heard it i'm like what like the dots connected her you said her father mentioned to you that they had replaced the lock yes that, they, that he had or he had fixed it or something but yeah he said that he had fixed it the week before it's believed the students had a lock on the door similar to this this is a keypad <laughs> lock are these things reliable <laughs> they're very reliable when they're installed properly and when they're used properly you press the code that was pre-programmed in push down on the lever handle open the door and then close the door behind you. I do not think it was the house that was targeted. I believe wholeheartedly that it was those kids who were targeted. Okay, the girl who was talking, that was Zana's mom. Got it. So she said the doors, the locks, all of that changed. It was different. So if she's talking about the outside doors or the doors that's inside for the lock, Zana's mom believes that, yes, the room doors were different. Because at first it was the doorknob. Now it's a coded lock. That's not the front door. I need to make that clear. <laughs> but we're not sure if each bedroom has a coded lock and says all six bedrooms had combination locks so if you got the girls in this room with the lock with the coded lock how did the killer manage to get in how did he figure out or she we don't know the we don't know how did they figure out the code this case this case this case okay that's why that's why the mom was like they was targeted and not the home it was not a robbery yeah i do not think it was the house that was targeted i believe wholeheartedly that it was those kids who were targeted now detectives ended up leaving the house with some brown bags so they did get something that's some good news the more stuff that they can get out this house and investigate the better for us i need to i need to figure this case out there will be a part two okay so it's a lot of things that we still don't know but of course the person left some evidence behind could this be the killer's handprint the ghostly image appeared when this window was dusted for prints. Now, the girl named Kaylee who was murdered out of the four, was it possible that she had a stalker? On whether Kaylee Gonzalez may have actually had a stalker, um, a lot of people have been wondering if Kaylee had a stalker. Why I believe that Kaylee Gonzalez was the only target first until she posted her last post on IG. Because if he can't have her, nobody can and got angry at her friends for simply being around her every day. Obviously, that was a rumor that was going around that was kind of highly believable, but police, they came in and investigated it, and it's like, it's probably most likely not the case. Maddie's bed is in room E, and Kaylee's in room F. Before now, we only knew they were found together, but we didn't know in Maddie's room or in Kaylee's room. It's haunting to see the lights in Maddie's room. 
they are still turned on just as they were the night of the murders. We know that this is getting three weeks in and it's starting to get, we don't want it to go cold. I can't just lay in my bed and do nothing. That's not the way I raised my family. That's not the way I raised my girls and my son. You, you don't be a victim. You stand up for yourself and you do everything in your power to make sure people hear you. They're gonna hear Kaylee. They're gonna hear Maddie. They're gonna hear these, these- Now they're too as well. Please repost. If you know something, say something. <sighs> We back, part two. It's about to be a lot to talk about. Y'all already know what I'm about to say. Go get your snacks. <sighs> this case is literally eating us up. It is it's eating us up. Idaho murders. This is part two. I will be doing a part three, but there are some dark conspiracy theories that y'all want me to say. Jack. Yes, X, this is just conspiracy theories. None of this is proven, just theories. Just had to clear that up, but I seen someone commented on TikTok and they said, the night of Kaylee murder, she called Jack and she spammed him and spammed him and spammed him. The reason why she done that was because it was just a message and her way of telling us that it was Jack because she knows she was about to die. Now people went even much more further and kept doing these dark theories on him because people also said he was out with the couple that was also at the house that was murdered. So when he came back with them, that's why it was no forced entry because the killer, Jack, was already in the house. That gentleman does not look like he has the means. I mean, just look at the guy. He does not have the means to kill four people. I believe that he did this crime. He got kicked off campus for putting dead carcass of animals on campus, right? But what I need to say right now is they need to open their eyes. Their own daughter left them a clue. She was his possession. And now Kelly's free. And in his eyes, Kelly belongs to him. But she doesn't really, you know? They are just theories, not facts. But that's why they're saying that it's a person close to them that they trusted because they knew the code to enter each other's room to murder them while they sleep. So then that's what people thought to themselves. Who else probably knew the code that was good in their inner circle? Well, people seen that they posted the girls who was murdered. They posted these other two girls who's at the bottom floor who survived. I really feel like the layout of this house is how those two women inside were untouched. Let me show you how if someone were to come in, they could either go upstairs and completely avoid the downstairs bedrooms. Here's a perspective from inside of the house. You can see how it would be easy to go down and completely avoid the first floor being so close to the front door. And then everybody's saying that, okay, this is connecting to the two girls. Now, to me, I'm gonna be real with y'all. Now, I'm gonna be completely real with y'all. These girls, they don't look like I've done true crime too much. And I know not to judge a book by a cover, but these girls, I just know that they didn't do it. Roz, why you not saying that for Jack? But no, no, Jack, Jack, you could be clear. Look, I'm gonna Jack, I'm not saying that you did it. It's crazy about the amount of people that's just saying, you know what, it connects to the two girls, even though Look, they probably haven't committed the murder. I've been seeing that they are connected with it, that they done the inside job. But then it all leads to, if it's an inside job, something behind the scenes had to have been so tragic and so hateful for them to even do that. It's no way that they would just do that to their friends. Friends. A group of people appeared to be walking briskly from where four University of Idaho students were murdered. If you fast forward 19 minutes and 28 seconds in, in the top right corner, the group of people appear. At 3.15 a.m., an alcohol-related incident was being recorded in front of Sigma Chi. This is the frat house where Ethan and Zaina had partied that night. The body cam footage was filmed at this red fire hydrant, and the group of people running appeared here, and from this angle is right here. In fact, there's a walkway from the road that leads to the house. Kaylee's phone records show a last phone call made at 2.52 a.m. It is believed the murders happened between 3 and 4 a.m. The group of people running were seen at 3.12 a.m. This small detail could be something or nothing, or maybe they left from the walkway that leads to the house. Crazy thing that I just discovered while I'm editing this. So if y'all don't know, the address of the house is 1122. The murder occurred around November, which is the 11th month, 2022. Now, I don't know that's, but, but I just wanna add this in as well. I wanna show y'all the scenery of this house inside of it. So just y'all can imagine this creep, this murderer walking all around this house at night while everybody is asleep, plotting, doing what they're gonna do. Which anybody can walk up here and enter there. This back patio enters the kitchen. Here's the kitchen. You see the back patio here. You come up the gravel, access to the sliding glass door. Another shot. This is coming up the stairs from below, button hooks into this living room where Ethan and her 
most likely sleeping. Unconfirmed, but most likely. This house look creepy as hell. I would not visit here, but I know it's gonna become an Airbnb in the future, because this case is gonna be history. All right, y'all are still with me, right? So, I'm holding the phone because it's 6 a.m. and I've been editing all night. I haven't slept. Look at my eyes. But on the news, they said they was looking for a white car in Elantra. Idaho still looking for a white car, uh, which could be the answer to solving this brutal murder case in Idaho. Police are searching for anybody who was uh, seen or around this Hyundai. Now, the night of the girls when they died, Haley and Madison, they was at this food truck. And in a reflection, you see this car that kind of looks like that white Elantra. And then the girls also take a picture. And in the back, you see this white car again. Is we tripping or is that the car? But I'm sorry, as we go further down this rabbit hole, it only leads me to one thing. Because when you use a knife, it's more personal. A knife is a crime of passion. Because you're looking at the person in the eyes, and you just, it, it gets real personal with a knife. <sighs> then I seen someone profile. They profiled Jack, and they put him on a list of pictures with more murderers. And he said, Now, once again, we're just doing what police always do to black people, and we're just profiling and taking a look here and just, hey, is it out of the realm of possibilities to say that hey, the kid snapped? Is it possible? Would he have just snapped? Because Kaylee's going off to college, she can meet more boys out there, cause she's single. They broke up. And it's like, you know what? Why, why murder the other three? Kaylee grew up with Maddie. Kaylee got the best relationship with Maddie. And then her other two friends, they're really, really close. It's just this whole real close friend group. So it's like, you know what? Y'all could have her, I can't snapped and lost his mind but something is telling me deep down though that it's not jack and it's something deeper that we just don't know i'ma just i'ma just leave it at that and that's the dark conspiracy theories behind this crazy case guys i'm not losing my mind over this case does it look like i'm losing my mind over this case no i am not i don't even know why i have off my shirt where did my shirt go now there's one more thing that i would do to figure this whole thing out there's somebody who knows how the murderer look and that person would be the dog now wait and hear me out as we all know obviously the dog didn't bark meaning that the dog knew the person that did the crime so here's what you can do every person that stepped foot in that house while the four college students was alive whether it's either to hang out with them to chill with them whatever it may be every person that walked in that house you get a dog expert that knows dog behavior very well every person that the dog Dog doesn't know get xed out every person that the dog knows get checked in you make every person do something individually just to see how the dog would react now if the dog react the same for everybody even the people that the dog doesn't know then that can explain a lot but if it don't that could also prove a lot i don't know right now if i'm sounding crazy or am i on to something i don't know but it makes sense at least we can say that the person must have a real love for animals because you didn't murder her dog meaning you really love animals and i want to also throw this out here we gotta watch out for any behavior of someone traveling don't let them leave even if they cleared i just had to throw that out there one of the craziest cases for real <laughs> before the four college students even died. Somebody was found dead, not too far away from the house where the four students were brutally murdered. 19 year old Hudson Lindo was found on April 30th in a creek, just less than a mile away from the home on King Road. As hoodie guy in the true crime community, we're all in attendance. Hudson's body was found the next morning in the creek, right outside Greek Row. Hudson's death was ruled an accidental drowning. I just know that I am not going to Idaho right now. Even though I never had plans to go, but it's crazy right now. And see how close it is to the home. Here's a map that shows how close Hudson was found in correlation to the home and the fraternities. Not trying to create conspiracy theories here, but for a small town, there sure are some crazy coincidences. Now, before the Idaho college students were murdered, there's body cam footage of the police going to the door, maybe for a noise complaint because they party and they're having fun. We're here for a noise complaint, come to the damn door. You guys are unlawfully entered because no one who lives here is here. What sorority are they affiliated with? I don't know. I don't, yeah, you I don't do. Know who lives here? Um, uh, we're not actually sure. Uh, or Boom, right there. That's one of the college students who survived. And as you can see on the body cam footage, the camera is looking through the cracks of the window inside of the college house where the students were murdered. This is the house, and I'm, I'm, I'm showing you at night. The house is 
house. It just still looks quiet. It looks peaceful. The house looks peaceful. I don't understand how someone could say this house is a target. And that's what I'm baffled on because, you know, there's there's plenty of houses around here. Why target a specific house that turns in? Doesn't make sense to me. Now we have to get into the guy Ethan. His car is found right here, but as you can see, the most important thing of this body cam footage, all of these people in this area knew the layout of this house because they was all partying there. So that means anybody could be the murderer at this point. Over to some other party and everyone is about to I just go over to another party. Okay, who does live here? Coming for alcohol, for oh, drink a choice then. What are their names? I am actually not sure. I live across the street. I just came over. Well, they told me they just live across the street, so that means they're Sigma Fest. Yep. Yep. Now, why did I bring up Ethan? Well, because he could have got in a big, big argument that night he was partying with another set of college students. Sigma Chi, the fraternity. And it could have escalated and all turned left. See that? Now, I just want to take you down to the end of this road here. And I'm just saying, if you wanted to walk from sigma chi over here you just you just walk it's like well time it i mean it's not even that not even that far clearly see that it, it's just a short distance walk from that location come to the door guys send you to work whoever lives here now. they're scared so that was ethan chapin's car the red jeep right here so everyone here is trespassing? Well, no one's here that's trespassing, but no one no one that lives here is here right now. So where'd they go? They're just not here. I have no clue where they went. No clue. So you guys just throwing a party in, in, in their house at the They time. were here at one point. They're not here right now. I just I they, just searched all the rooms. They left and went over to some other party. We just need to I, talk I, to somebody who lives here, because okay. otherwise I have yeah. to be under the assumption you guys are unlawfully entered because no one who lives here is here. So could they possibly have went through something tragic at the Sigma house causing all four of them to be involved? We don't know. Now this leads us back to one more thing. The murderer knows the layout of the house. This is the front door. Downstairs is where the two surviving roommates' bedrooms were. These are the stairs that lead to the living room. Notice how Zayna's room, bedroom 2B, is down this hallway. These are the stairs that lead to Kaylee and Maddie's room. Notice how Zayna's room is out of the way. Many speculate the killer entered the home via the sliding glass doors in the kitchen. Bedroom 2A was the only empty room in the home. This was a room that contained a window that was missing a screen. Polly gave them hugs, handshake with them, definitely party with them, used a bathroom, been in probably every bedroom, at all of the kitchen, every crevice of the house because this house is way too complicated. They have been in there before, they hung out with all of them before, and this was definitely premeditated. Now let's get into some more dark things going around this case that y'all probably don't know. So here's one theory that could possibly be highly true. Remember that white car that they was looking for? Of a white 2011 to 2013 Hyundai Elantra. Well, that car, I don't know if it was the same exact one, but they found that same kind of car wrecked. Hey, what we find here? A white Elantra with somebody inside. Well, look here. Around 3 a.m., remember, the car was speeding past. This is around the time they was already dead. It came from the gas station maybe to pick up the killer. I seen somebody say this in the comment section on TikTok. The neighbor, his name is E9 Harsh. He been interviewed, and people think that this dude is really, really weird. I'll get into some facts real quick before I get into this weird interview. As we all know, the four students, they died from a knife. He made a YouTube channel, and then he showing off his knife skills in his YouTube channel. Shop it out. Another thing is, apparently he was at work and he wasn't at the food truck when the girls was there and people said, this guy right here who was at the food truck looks like him. I don't think he does. Or am I tripping, but I don't think they look alike. Now, here's the interview. For obvious reasons, I'm gonna ask you, are you the killer? <laughs> no, I think that's obvious to anyone who's not a, you know, completely stupid <laughs> or flat earther or, you know, I don't know. I, I, guess, I guess it might look kind of crazy you know, just because my life or whatever, but. The stuttering, the constant moving around, the fidgeting, everything just was adding up and people was like, hmm, look at his build. He looked like he's capable of doing it. You know, and like I said, I take everything the media says with a grain of salt, but they were saying that um, the knife was, was kind of like a loose term to describe it. Cause they're now like saying it's more of like a bigger, like blunt object and from like a really strong man. Um, So apparently, so, you know, I'm apparently there was like 
big gate gouges in them and stuff so i'm kind of picturing like you know it's kind of interesting in this area because um some of the surrounding uh areas have a history of of lead poisoning so but do he fit the description y'all let me know now this guy named adam apparently the girls was walking at night the night of the murder and they said As of right now, the public really don't know who he is, at least of my knowledge. This is bartender Adam Lauda at the Corner Club Sports Bar where Kaylee and Madison were drinking the night they were stabbed to death. But I also seen this as well. I seen somebody say that the father, the mom, they already know who the murderer, but they have to go along with it and make everything seem comfortable for the murderers just so they can which is smart because all they doing now is just building up the evidence getting all the evidence in and i know they have a lot of evidence hopefully <laughs> the idaho college students update now kaylee is doing something that i seen nobody talk about well, she is on her phone all day just texting and texting and texting away her friend ended up coming up to her hugging her but she still gets on her phone and texts. she's having a deep conversation with somebody that entire time <laughs> Moments later go by, she's still texting on her phone. Meaning it's something very, very important going on in her phone. And y'all probably be like, the police should know who she texted. It can be, but if she was on Snapchat, that's not traceable. I don't know if WhatsApp is traceable, I don't even know. As y'all can see, she still texted. It's something important going on at this very moment because minutes and minutes and minutes, she just text and text and text and text. Even though she got this route around her, she's not even caring about none of it. I mean, hypothetically, when she was taking them pictures with her friend, was it on Snapchat or was it just pictures to just put in her camera roll? Most likely though, when we do take pictures, we're on Snap. I'm just being very realistic of how we are in our younger generation. It's just what we do. We take pictures on Snap, not even from the real actual camera. So she could have been snapping someone. Something else y'all need to know that I found very, very weird is the ladder on side of the house. No, the police did not put that there. Remember, they don't touch nothing when they investigate the crime scene. And Amber Ness, no, the cops would not put this ladder there. It's very obvious somebody was up here. You can see the fade right there. That means somebody slid off and on. And I doubt the police would do that because that would disturb this crime scene and it would be over. That's why the tape, police tape, is around the ladder. It was already placed there. Now, what's fishy about it? Well, you can climb up this ladder to potentially just get up to the second floor. There's two windows right there. This could be a premeditated ladder that was placed there weeks before the murder, days before the murder. We don't know. So then it's like, if your target is on the third floor, why attack the people that's on the second floor? Because if you go up to the second floor, that's your entry point. So you kind of have to target the people that's on the second floor to get to the people that's on the third floor. Y'all with me? <sighs> I just want to throw this in there. This picture is very, very, very creepy. <laughs> you don't see it? Well, here it is. The lady glaring in the window. Yeah, I know the police officer, but that picture is just creepy. It just creeped me out a little bit. Now I'm Brian, the Idaho suspect. He was walking to the court, walking and walking, then boom, right there. Look at the eyes. Look at the face. Everybody's saying that he got this non-human robotic expression all the time. His people who knew him uh, or even his current classmates said he has this, he, that's that's how he is. Man, this guy has a cold stare, you know? Yeah. And so, but he has a cold stare. Man, this is a potential face of us. And has this robot like what i have to yell at y'all why y'all was dming me so much innocent people because we was trying to figure out who's a because two can keep a secret if one of them is dead a is the murderer but we kind of had a clue y'all wanted me to do a theory on the boyfriend jack first unlike y'all i threw out this i threw out this jack jack you could be clear look i'm a jack i'm not saying that you did it we kept digging we kept digging we kept looking at body cam we kept seeing all type of stuff and now we lead to here and now we have a suspect brian was arrested in pennsylvania if y'all didn't know i just came from pennsylvania literally i had spent my whole holiday there <laughs> A coincidence was just next to the guy who murdered four people allegedly i guess he's the suspect at this point we all believe it's him he got a court date just so just let's just wait and see what happens he also got my dad name my dad is named brian <laughs> okay but brian he looks like a creepy guy like this he just he just got this look that just looks unsettling i don't know what it is i think it's the eyes but he just looks so unsettling after you know what didn't happen but you can kind of tell that he is 
I don't know, I'ma stay away from that guy type of vibe. If we being real, he's he's an attractive dude. Most narcissists, most killers that go out and get away with a lot of murder, killing a lot of people are good looking men. <laughs> If you still think I'm tripping, I did a whole video about how people today make edits of these psycho murderers don't care what they've done all because they look attractive. I would not be surprised if I see a Brian edit. By the way, if I see a Brian edit, I'm gonna put it in right now because somebody thought he was attractive. Now, Brian back then, he had a lot of weight on him. He wasn't as skinny and as fit as he was now. Will we believe that happened because a former friend came out that knew Brian said that he was taking drugs. She did not know she would bring him to go pick up these drugs without her knowledge. And that's how he lost his weight. Zana and Maddie, they worked at a vegan spot. If y'all didn't know, Brian was or still is a vegan. Could have walked in, seen the two, and instantly got obsessed with them. As we know, people do get obsessed with a lot of celebrities, and they stalk them. Jennifer Lopez got quite the scare when workers discovered an unwelcome guest living at her Hamptons pool house, apparently for days. And there's buku incidents of people just becoming obsessed with somebody, stalking them, then killing them. It's buku. So when he seen the two, after he got so obsessed and stalked them, killing them through a big house party at their living. When they threw the big house party, the four students wasn't even at their house. It's on body cam. You have all of these other teenagers, grown-ups at the house, but the four. They was gone. That could have been a perfect opportunity for Brian to walk in and examine the whole house and look at every detail of it and then the motive. Now the motive is about to be the dark conspiracy theory that I have about why it all happened after he got obsessed. Here's the theory. Goosebumps. Okay, now he studied criminology. He know a lot about criminal and law. He studied it. That can also explain why this case took a little while for us to figure out who the suspect was in general. Here's the point where I'm about to get at. After everything is said and done, after the court date said and done, if he's proven guilty, that's say he did do it or let's say he gets away with it or anything that it could be what if he murdered the four just to see he can do it and get away with it is it just me or or does he give y'all that genius vibe like he he looked like a genius he looked like he can pull off doing something like this and completely getting away with it after everybody completely think and believe it's him. But he premeditated the whole thing. Maybe this, he did this months, 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 months of planning. And then he knew he was going to get arrested. He knew his apartment was going to get searched, which it did. For some odd reason, he knew that he needed his dad on a passenger seat with him when he got caught, when he was kind of looking shocked. Koberger allegedly switched them from Pennsylvania Place just five days after the murder. Inside the car, you can see Koberger. And look, is that a bruise or cut on his wrist? You can see his father, Michael, is using the GPS on his cell phone as they make their way back to Pennsylvania. I know, it sounds crazy, but he gave me that vibe of being a genius at doing something so crazy. Even though it's a theory, but it is crazy when you think about it. Now, before I end this video, the last thing I'll give y'all, because I love y'all, is if you're a person that gonna live home alone, or you think or believe you're gonna live home alone in the future, and you might be scared, the best thing to do is get a dog. Maybe multiple dogs. The reason is because they're the best alarm ever. They bark at anything, and they have really, really, really good hearing. If you wanna go above Above and beyond you could do your research and get a dog with really really good hearing you could train your dog to bark at anything it's your dog multiple dogs best way to go about it you'll be surprised and shocked about how much dogs ruin intruders playing and run them off because they just bark fearing for his life takes off mom locks the door and quickly calls the police while Dubai continues barking away, perhaps? Imagine if the dog in the Idaho house would have barked. It would have woke everybody in the house up and things could have been different, but the dog didn't bark. Have y'all ever seen Kaylee talk to the police on this body cam? Well, here it is. You go to school? Uh, yeah. Okay, what year? Senior. Senior, okay. You're disturbing the peace. Yeah. Nothing against having parties, nothing against having people over who are overage to drink. Mm -hmm. But again, once we start disturbing the neighbors, then we've got an issue. Yeah. For some odd reason, one of the kids was wearing zip ties around his wrist. Not only that, that ladder that I talked about inside the house was there. And Amber Ness, no, the cops would not put this ladder there. It's very obvious somebody was up here. Now, next thing is the ladder. We just talked about it, but 
Remember y'all, I said that ladder was a premeditated ladder. Somebody easily, just easily for stalking behavior, for extra entry point, who knows, just to spy on them right before you murder them. Even though the window could be locked, you make a check through the crack of the blinds, you don't know. It could be numerous dark reasons why that ladder is there if it's placed there for bad attention. I think somebody else helped him with the murder. I don't think it was just him. He could have stabbed all four of them by himself alone. But somebody could have easily helped him plan this sicko plan out. What makes it worse is, I don't know if this 100% true, but somebody in the comments said, Kelly and Brian texted, they know each other. What if he was at the party and what if Brian told them to play a sick zip tie game just to play around and have fun? <laughs> Because we don't know who was all in the house. Only two people came out the house. Burger followed both Kaylee and Maddie on Instagram. But Koberger liked every one of Maddie's photos. There is so much that still haven't came out yet. The phone call, of course, of the two survivors. When they call the cops about the dead bodies being passed out because they didn't know they was dead. I believe there is more body cam footage, of course. I believe they found some things, interesting things in Brian's apartment when he searched it. You don't know what I'm going to put out on this case. I'm going to find some more stuff, believe. Hey guys, can you send someone out who lives here, please? Nope. Sorry, you can always call us later and ask. In case uh, you can know the drill, right? Actually, no. Oh, okay. So, usually, at least for me, I'll give you a verbal warning. Okay. It, it seems a little strange what this guy's doing. He's, he's kind of making it seem like he's with her. He sits down on the couch, and then in like about a couple of seconds, he's going to get up and go back in. Uh, once I have neighbors calling in, your music's too loud, you're disturbing the peace. Yeah. Nothing against having parties, nothing against having people over who are overage to drink. Mm -hmm. But again, once we start disturbing the neighbors, then we've got an issue. Yeah. Noise ticket is up to 300. Yeah, and... somewhere around 300. Okay, it's a pretty expensive ticket. I don't want to give that to you. Yeah. That being said, this is your place, so I'm going to hold you responsible. Uh -huh. Because it is your place, you're also responsible for everybody here. Yeah. So I'm going to grab your info. Yeah. Um, and if I do have to come back here, uh, the 300 some dollar tickets coming your way. Okay. And it only gets more expensive from there. Is that fair? Yeah, that's okay. fair. Probably 640. Let's rather you spend that 300 bucks on beer or something. Yeah. Like yeah. Noise yeah. Ticket, right? yeah, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Her phone number. That being said, warnings. Don't do it again. Yep. I'd hate to come back and few hours and then have to issue that so yeah. any questions for me yeah. all right an arrest has reportedly been made in the quadruple stabbing death of four college students this case is coming to an end you understand yes and there's one more video that I have to update y'all with with this case, and that's the phone call of the surviving roommates. But this mystery is just starting to unravel. If Kaylee, Maddie, Zana, and Ethan one step closer to a conviction. I don't know if y'all been knowing, but some weird stuff in the Idaho murder been strange with body cam footage. Now this case is coming close and close, close to an end. But I wanna show y'all some creepy little footage. It's not really creepy, but I just wanna show y'all some footage that you may have not seen. This was before the four students have died and the police ended up coming to their place. Turn the music down. Hey guys, second time. I need one, I need somebody to come to the door. Music stays off, party's over. That's all they do is party? This is like the third time on body cam that the police had to come to this house because they keep partying. Hello, miss. Hello. What's your name? Zana. Zana, do you live here? Yes. Hey, did Megan talk to you earlier? I, no. Okay, does Megan live here? Megan, I do not have a Megan that lives Megan here. Mogan? Maddie oh, Mogan, yes. Madison Mogan? Yeah. Madison Mogan? Okay, she does Sorry, live here. Sorry, we... She is at the club. Now that girl y'all seen, her name is Xana. Y'all know Xana. But just listen to what they have to say. She's 21. I'm just going to bed. I have a couple friends over, but okay. this is my ID. Have you talked to Maddie tonight? Yes, I have. Oh. She's at the cl corner club. Okay. Did she, did she tell you anything about anything that happened earlier or anything like that? Maddie had a boyfriend, Jake Schreiger. 
is the first person I talk to every morning and the last person I talk to before, before bed. See, I know we party out here in Louisiana a lot, but I just cannot do it as much as they do it. If you party a lot, let me know down in the comment section. I'm really curious to see if y'all party this much. Honestly, not really. I'm, I've just been here for the past hour. Okay, okay. Just trying to go to bed. Can I grab your ID for me? Yeah, right I'm here. not 21. I Okay. My roommates are 21. I just came well, to go to bed. We're, we're not here for we're not here to talk about the alcohol <laughs> stuff, Dave. Okay. Yeah. Um, but th this is the second noise complaint we've had here tonight within two hours. I'm sorry. Okay. About that. So this time it was the blonde gal and the guy on the back porch playing music. Okay. So I sincerely apologize about that. Y'all know what's so crazy? Before the Idaho murders case, they had another case years back, almost similar to this case. This man was stalked his family. The man who you see right there in that red, and he killed all of them and kidnapped two children. I don't want to get too much into it because I'm going to talk about this story on my channel. Okay. So, just so you understand, you could be getting a misdemeanor citation for this, which means you have to go in front of a judge and explain why you couldn't keep the people in your house quiet. Okay? We've already talked to Maddie once and told her the same thing. Okay? The only reason she's not getting a ticket is because she's not standing here in front of me. But I'm telling you right now, if we have to come back, you're getting a ticket. Okay, so you I'm will have to go right see a now. judge. I'm fine right now. You're not getting a ticket I'm right now. I'm just trying to go to bed right okay. now. I mean, I I understand you guys. You're coming here. I'm I'm just going. To bed. Okay. Well, understand that you're responsible for the residents. Okay. So whoever else is here. If they have a safe way to get home, you need to kick them out. All right, so Zana, she was kind of smart because she was like, I want to go to sleep. She could have probably really wanted to go to sleep, but I knew, we all knew she was kind of drunk and she was slurring her words. Like, really slurring her words. I don't know if y'all picked up on that. Okay. Or tell them to come inside and be quiet. Because okay. the houses that are on this hill all the way around here, we can hear you from clear down the road when we were coming up here. We can hear the music. Okay. And that's I'm so sorry. where we're past the point of having polite conversations, okay? Because yeah, so neighbors sorry. are being kept up. They went to high schools together. They came here together. And in the end, they died together. Is the, the blonde gal and the guy up there, are they roommates too? Sorry, what? The, the blonde gal and the, the guy that's upstairs, are they roommates too? None of my roommates are home. Oh, okay. Okay. Another crazy thing about this case is Brian met up with this girl that he met on Tinder. I couldn't believe that like i was face to face with this guy and i was kind of afraid to say no so i just let him come in with me she let him in her place so you know what happened he kept trying to tickle me and i would ask him to stop or i'd say what are you doing and he would be like i'm not i'm i'm not tickling you and he would get very serious she goes to the bathroom because now she's kind of creeped out by him and she pretends to throw up. I proceeded to pretend to throw up in the bathroom, hoping that, you know, it would gross him out and he would leave. Did it work? Yeah. He um, had messaged me on Tinder and said that he was leaving and that he had a good. So, do you understand 100% what, what's going to happen? I just going to tell everyone, get the f I'm sorry. Get the f or figure yeah. it out. And, and I'm not saying that you got to tell everybody they have to leave, but I'm telling you, any outside music. Any loud yelling needs to be done. Okay. Because we're not, next time you're getting a ticket. Okay. Okay. And if you get a misdemeanor citation, the university is not going to take time into it. Yeah. So not I only do you have to go see a judge. That I've never had to deal with this ever. Yep. So we got to go get it. <laughs> I don't know where the, my car keys are. I won't drive like I could, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> So any, any questions? No questions. Okay. Make sure your friends don't put you in a bad position. Tell them it's time to be done. I'll okay. Go. There's like no one in there. Yeah. Anymore. It was the two that were around the back. We had to holler at them to turn the music down. So, Thank alrighty. You guys, I'm so sorry. Nope, that's alright. You take care, okay? Now, the police digging deep into all of this, they ended up finding some evidence. And just in case y'all haven't been updated with this, here's evidence. One black glove, the dustbin for a vacuum cleaner, a pillow with a quote red brownish stain, a fire TV stick, and 13 possible hair strands. Now it was noted that these could be either human or animal hairs. Now if you missed it, if you can jot down exactly where this hair came from, let's just say if it's a dog, if it's the exact dog that we see on the video right now, oh yeah, it's done.
It's a done deal. If that hair comes from that dog, let's just say it's dog hair, it's done. The case is over with. Like, he would have a tough time fighting this case. Now, ladies, I gotta tell y'all this. I understand y'all wanna party and have fun. Just now in Louisiana and my state, there's this bar that is so popular. <laughs> This girl falls off the bar. Everybody have fun. Recently, this girl was having so much fun and she got drunk that she got in a car with these four guys. They didn't bring her home. Instead... But instead of driving her to her house, they stopped at the side of the road. And that's where investigators claim Madison was in the back seat. So I'm saying all of this to say, if you're going to have fun and you're going to drink a little bit too much, make sure you have somebody to babysit you that you trust. If not, just don't go. Madison was put out of the car where she kind of walked along the side of the road, stumbled into the road at one point, and then was hit and killed. The time, 2.50 a.m. The driver who hit Madison worked for a rideshare company. He has not been charged. A bright young light gone too soon. Now we gotta get into some shocking, surprising content. Con now we gotta get into some shocking, surprising. Why is there theories going around that the girl named Dylan was in on it? All because she looked at the guy, apparently. Dylan again hears something and looks outside her door. She sees the suspect. He walks right past her and leaves. There's a lot of individuals attacking this girl, saying that she was in on this, she knew this was going to happen, why didn't she call the police earlier? Why did the surviving roommates wait almost eight hours after the murders to call 911? And apparently he walked past her room three times and didn't do nothing to her. So everybody think that, okay, this girl has to be in on it. I'm not saying she's in on it. So he's not getting distracted with things going on around him. And remember, it's dark in there. So there's certainly what it just indicates to me is that he didn't see her. She saw him. Which, which was certainly to her uh, her benefit. Oh my gosh, imagine. Hold on, imagine, imagine. I opened that door right there. When And when I open it, I see Brian. Mind you, it's pitch black dark. Something like this. And I see a shadow figure standing in the hallway like this. You know how scared I be? Especially if he just charge at me. As this case get deeper, I'm just hoping this girl don't have nothing to do with this case because these theories are getting crazy with Dylan. And because I haven't heard much people say this, the reason why I believe he didn't murder the dog was because, remember, he has a lifestyle of being a vegan. He have a passionate love for animals, most vegans at least. So why would he do that? That's just what I think. Queens, kings, y'all enjoy y'all night. Yeah, that's it. 